Rich Gonzalez of Prep Cal Track along with Jason Eichelberger. We're here at Woodward Park for the 35th annual CAF State Cross Country Championships. The last few years here in the Golden State, we've had the luxury of watching the greatest high school team in history, Newberry Park. <laughs> the Young Brothers have moved on, the Song Brothers have moved on, so the greatest team in history is now the collegiate ranks, and we thought pretty much talk of records would be, okay, something that's not gonna happen quite as much. And then lo and behold, we've got Sadie Engelhart, among the top girls ever in state meet history on this course. On the boys' side, surprisingly, a couple of guys that are running really well, moving faster than we thought at this point in time, Anthony Fasthorse of Ventura, and Evan Noonan of Dana Hills. And then behind all that, some outstanding team matchups. Uh, it's always been obviously north versus south. Uh, Jason, as far as what have you seen as far as a trend at the year-end state meet, the change in recent years? Well, this was always a meet where I think the South kind of showed their strength and, and maybe had a stranglehold on some of the top positions. But in the recent, most recent years, I feel like that's eased a bit. Uh, Percentage-wise, we've kind of done the math and the percentage has dropped in terms of Southern section and teams from the South. And I think that's opened things up for some other teams to kind of show their strength too at this particular meet. We've had some great teams in recent years. Obviously, Jesuit from the Sac Joaquin has been loaded for many, many years. What we're talking about in recent years, we've seen the emergence of Granada on the national scale on the boys' side. Dublin, same thing on the boys' side. But just in general, we've seen some quote-unquote all-time teams from certain sections that have taken away some of that limelight from the southern section and normalized things. Of the 102 teams that are ranked going into the state meet, we do have two ties at number 10 in two divisions. 51 are from the southern section and the other 51 from other parts of the of the state perfect symmetry there. <laughs> <laughs> but it used to be around 60 to 65 percent from the southern section so definitely we've seen some more balancing you know definitely some of these teams emerging uh this week some of the great races well first of all start off from the very top division one boys southern section does dominate there a great three team set we've seen great open very strong throughout the year Last week, it was San Clemente that pulled off the victory at the Southern Section meet. Tribuco Hills, a team that's the deepest of the three, but has not clicked on all sewers at the same time, that's a very dangerous dark horse. What are your thoughts on the division? You know, I, it's interesting that you say that in terms of those particular three, all have great pedigrees, all have great coaching, strong coaching there. Um, it, this is the kind of year where you have teams that are really strong and maybe those little, little ingredients there can be the difference. How we can kind of get to a point where one of those can kind of emerge. Does one of those maybe have an off day? Does one take advantage of maybe having a runner or two really kind of step up? It'll be interesting to see how those play out. So, Tribuco Hill is the deepest squad, but they haven't put it completely together. San Clemente's very good through five, pretty good at six, bit of a drop off. And then we've got Great Oak. They're missing their number one, Weston Brown. He had an injury. He's not run since the Clovis Invitational, and yet they're still clicking and doing very well. Should be a great race. Move over to Division Two. Division Two, Ventura on paper is the best squad, but they've had injuries all season long to a few key kids. Uh, of late, we saw their channel league rival, Santa Barbara, of all teams, beat them at the Southern Section Finals by two points, making up a big deficit in the last 1,000 meters. And the third team that I think no one has really noticed is Jesuit. They've very quietly been running very well at individual positions, but they've been, been dealing with a lot of sickness the last few weeks. I think they're a dangerous dark horse, probably not a favorite to win, but they're one team that could surprise some people this weekend. Any thoughts on D2? Well, you talked about those first two teams, and obviously they have standouts at the top there. I think that kind of comes down, and that may you know, decide things potentially when you have that uh, kind of a run back of the state championships in track and field in the 1600 with Fast Horse and Dibdahl there. So it should be interesting to see how that kind of plays out here at Willow Park. Division three boys. This could be a barn burner between two teams. Dana Hills has been outstanding. In fact, the middle of the season, they were the best team in California. Oakdale of the Sac Joaquin section. We saw them run very well last year in postseason and run great at state. Uh, they did not qualify for an XN. They ended up going ahead to Alabama to compete in the running lane championships. They did quite well there. Uh, this year, they had some key graduations, graduation losses, doing quite well. And I do think they are very poised and very focused 
very motivated to try and knock off Dana Hills, which is a great team that features probably the best runner in the state overall in Evan Noonan. Uh, your thoughts on that showdown? Well, you talked about Dana Hills, and obviously they have the pedigree. They've been here so many times before. Oakdale is a program that may not be in the limelight quite as much, but that arrow has been pointing up. You talked about uh, Dana Hills in terms of at the front there with Evan Noonan, obviously extremely, extremely talented runner on a national scale there. We'll see how that translates here, but again, pedigree against a team whose arrow is pointing up should be a great, great battle. There. Dana Hills has always been money at the state meet. Oakdale scares me. That's going to be a great, <laughs> great, great showdown. Nerve-wracking. Division Four boys, the team to beat, last year's state champions, St. Francis, locking out a Ridge Southern section. I love the fact that they're a veteran group, a very, very focused group, very hungry group. They check all the boxes for me. They're very tough. The next best team on paper, and the top few teams are all from the southern section. The next best team, Jay Sarah, back a little bit of a ways, but they're coming off their very best race of the season. You talked about the pedigree there, and obviously being a defending champion, you know what it takes. You know what you have to do in terms of executing. So I expect St. Francis to be strong here. Jay Sarah, very hungry team. They want to add to kind of what they've been doing, and they've been running well the last month. We've seen the progression there. It's going to be really good to see and key to see what they can do here in a big pressure situation. And keep your eye on Foothill Technology. They've been coming on really well the last month of the season. They currently come in third ranked into the state meet this weekend. Division 5, last year's champions, Crystal Springs and Uplands of Hillsboro Central Coast section. They won the section again this year. They have, they've been the favorite coming in. However, Yosemite, they were a team that, I'll be, I'll just speak frankly, they raced a lot last year, and they came here a bit tired, I thought, and they finished in third, a very good team. This year, just by chance, a couple of their top runners got sick early, got injured early, had missed most of the season. I like the fact that they're arriving here on fresher legs. Now granted, they're still working themselves into shape, but I don't think the pressure is on as much as it was last year, and they're very dangerous. Uh, no one is really expecting, ex outside their camp, I don't think anyone expects them to contend for the win. They're dangerous. Thoughts? Always, always key to kind of see that, how things work out. You may have injuries early, but if people can kind of get back and get into a little bit of a rhythm, could they have a big, big mark and a big performance on a big stage? We'll see if they can carry that here tomorrow. Girl side, Division One. the last several years, the team that's been carrying the banner for the state of California has been Buchanan. This is essentially their home course. They are once again the favorite. They are very, very deep, interchange really well. They can go off of the top seven, and they're the team to beat. Santiago, out of the southern section, out of Corona, they have improved nicely the last few years. A phenomenal up front talent, Riley Blade, a junior. Um, it's gonna be tough to beat Buchanan. Any thoughts? You mentioned it, Buchanan running on their home course, a very uh, a program that's steeped in tradition and history. They've accomplished things here, always difficult. But when you have that talent on front, Santiago Corona with Riley Blade, there's always a possibility that she can pull her teammates along. They're running with confidence too as they won Southern Section last weekend. We'll see if they can maybe make that challenge there with Buchanan. Yeah, depth-wise, we've seen nobody that matches up with Buchanan at the depth, at the depth positions. We'll see if that changes this weekend. Uh, Division two, Ventura, very, very strong up front on paper. Uh, your thoughts on the division, Division two girls? You know, I, I, I'm looking to see what Ventura can do. Um, obviously, when you have that great talent up front, that kind of overshadows maybe the team. And sometimes that gets the attention and not maybe the team. I know that they're, they are excited to be here. Will that excitement kind of carry over in terms of a strong performance? Um, I think that's something to kind of keep an eye on as well as we look for Division two. Ventura has Sadie Engelhart. She's in a challenge for the course record. She's run 1640 here. The course record 1631 by Claudia Lane out of Malibu High School, a Division IV school. There are four big teams in the division. We mentioned Ventura, also in the mix, Los Altos, Central Coast section. They were supposed to be kind of the co-favorite this year. They had a few problems at the section meet. At the same time, their rival, St. Francis, ran really well, won the CCS title. And Claremont, now that they're at full strength, they are very good. Division three, this was supposed to be almost the show for Campo Lindo. I think the last few weeks things have changed. They now have company. 
we knew Dana Hills was going to be strong and might be kind of in contention. Cathedral Catholic, a team that always fares well at the San Diego section, they've come on big time. The last month, right now, I see Cathedral Catholic as the favorite for the first time all year. It's interesting, Rich. We, we always talk about where teams are in terms of where their arrow is pointing at this time of year. You have teams that you focus on early in the season, and maybe you don't see a team kind of come from another position. Cathedral Catholic is one, and again, Dana Hills. It was a program that maybe early in the year they were kind of finding their way a bit, and now they're starting to do so. Coaching, I think, is a big part of that, and they're kind of in that mode where they're heading in the right direction. should be a great battle there for the deep team title. The interesting thing in Division Three, the best tradition in the North Coast section, all divisions combined, Camp Olindo. San Diego, best tradition, all divisions combined, Cathedral Catholic. On the boys' side, Southern section, all divisions combined, Dana Hills. They had a coaching change early in the year. The Dana Hills boys coach, Craig Dunn, is now handling the girls. So you have three programs that are all kind of in a sense in the mix. They have great leadership on top. So that one has me very, very interested. Division four, it's Jay Sarah and everyone else. <laughs> Jay Sarah is stacked. From top to bottom and beyond, they are stacked. They're gonna go after the divisional course record and among the best times ever here at the state meet. Your thoughts on Jay Sarah, a school you know pretty well because you now work there as well. <laughs> well, you mentioned it. They are extremely talented. And obviously, in terms of respect for all the other opponents out there, uh, I think it's pretty clear that they are the team to beat and they should you know, do very well. Um, they are definitely looking at this meet as an opportunity to kind of stamp a legacy. If they were to win, it'd be their sixth school uh, state championship in history. They'd be one behind Corona Del Mar in terms of Orange County history. Um, and they're also kind of looking forward to getting ready for Potomac potential national uh, racing next weekend as well. So for them, this is a part of the process. They're a team that you said, you know, they have the balance, they have so much depth there. Lineups, and they can put so many different combinations, and all of them have performed so far this year. Now it's about putting the bow on top of the present to see what they can do here at the state meet level. Division five girls, I thought it was gonna be the most wide open division. That's changed the last two weeks. Francis Parker of San Diego, they have really thrown down the gauntlet. Right now, I do see them as a clear favorite in Division Five. After that, if you saw the rankings, we've got Parker at number one. For the first time ever, we've got four teams tied at number two. I don't like doing that, but doing the different form charts, different scenarios, all within five points on paper. Something's gotta give, but that's gonna be a great race. And then as individually, we already mentioned the fact of Sadie Engelhart, Division Two on the girls' side. Riley Blade, Division One on the girls' side. Han Thompson out of Montgomery, Division Three on the girls' side. On the boys, Anthony Fasthorse, Division Two on the boys' side. Evan Noonan, Division Three on the boys' side. At the start of the year, I really, even though we're strong individually, I didn't think anyone had a chance of threatening the course record, and I don't say that lightly. You know, back when Herman Fernandez Herman Fernandez broke it 1424 his senior year. I thought this year our best kids might run at the end of the season, low 1440s. When Anthony Fasthorse ran 1433 at Clovis here, that really caught me off guard that he was able to run that fast. And entering the season, I didn't think he was the number one kid in the state. I thought he was number two. Evan Noonan is still learning how to race. He's from Dana Hills. I think both those kids can give the course record a scare. Given the fact that the temperature is going to be in the 50s, that's great racing weather. We may have the fastest one-two we've seen. Uh, this is on the hill, on the heels, obviously, of what we've seen from Newbury Park the last few years. So again, just a great lineup, top to bottom at the California State Meet, 35th annual. Make sure you tune back in for highlights. Any closing thoughts? You talked about records, and obviously records are meant to be broken, so it will be very interesting to see how close some of those runners get to those marks. You mentioned uh, the record of Herman Fernandez, and we were here that day in which he did it. That time is still one that we talk about frequently in terms of being fantastic. To see two gentlemen who 
could have an opportunity to go after that would be amazing. We will also hear Claudia Lane when she set that record um, in terms of 1631 on the girls side. Sadie Englehart, obviously one of the premier talents in this country. She's running confidently. She looked great last week and I know the course was modified down at Mount Sac, um, but you know when a runner is confident and they have the look of somebody who could do something really special. She had that look. I'm excited to see her and if she can get close to that 1631. All right, there you go. Internet connection here is not that strong in Wilder Park, so tomorrow, best best way to follow us is go ahead on Instagram. Uh, we'll send stuff also on Twitter, but that's your best way because we'll be very, very busy. But for our team out here, Jimmy Sue, Dylan Stewart, and Jason Lagerberger, I'm Rich Gonzalez. We'll talk to you tomorrow.